Start by setting aside all of your cord except for your 35 inch working cords and the lead cord. So you're gonna start by grabbing one of your 35 inch cords, set aside the others for now, and you're just gonna fold that in half to make sure that both of the ends are even. Next, you'll grab your lead cord, which is the 65 inch string, and you're going to fold it so that one side is much shorter than the other. And what we're gonna do is actually make the shorter end match up in length with your first working cord. So I'm just gonna grab that at its halfway point, and here I'm just lining them up so that they come to the same end point. I'm gonna keep that in place and hold its place. That is where we are going to attach our first cord. So you're going to use a reverse lark's head knot to just secure the working cord onto the lead cord and go ahead and pull to tighten. Now I'm just making sure that the ends line up once again. And now you can go ahead and grab one more working cord. So we're gonna start with two for now and you're just going to do the same thing. Make sure that the ends are lined up so that it's folded in half. And then you're going to attach that right next to the first working cord. Again, use another reverse Lark's head knot to secure it into place. This next step is how we are going to start forming the circular shape. You're gonna take the shorter end of the lead cord and cross it underneath the longer end of the working cord. And once you have it crossed underneath, you're gonna sort of pinch them both together. So now you're gonna use the shorter end to actually tie a clove hitch knot around the longer end of the lead cord. So once you pull that nice and tight, you're gonna see sort of a circular shape form, and that is the shape that we are going to build off of for the rest of the coaster. Now this next tool is totally optional, but I find it really helpful when I'm making coasters. I just use a cork board and a pin to keep it in place and keep the coaster flat as I work. So now that we have the base of our coaster started, we're just going to continue building onto it by tying knots around the lead cord and adding in new strings as needed. So moving in a counterclockwise circle, you're going to pick up the next string from the previous knot that you've created, and you're just gonna tie another clove hitch knot around the lead cord. Then you'll continue on to the next string and tie another clove hitch knot. So here's an example of a gap in between strings where we are going to need to fill that in with a new working cord. So I'm taking another 35 inch string, folding it in half, and you're going to attach it to the lead cord using a reverse Lark's head knot as we did with the first couple of strings. Then you're going to slide that knot in as far as you can so that it's right next to the previous knots. And then you can move on to the next string and continue tying clove hitch knots.
tying a few more clove hitch knots, I noticed another spot that has a bit of a gap. So then I'm going to grab my next working cord and just attach it in the same fashion using a reverse Lark's head knot. One trick that you can use if you keep on getting your lead cord and your working cords mixed up is to tie a single knot at the end of your lead cord. And this will just help you keep track of which one is the lead cord so that you don't mix it up with the other strings. Once you've used up your first group of working cords, you can move on to the next group. So you're going to do the next longest strings. So right now I'm grabbing my 25 inch strings and I'm going to move on to those until I've used all of those up. Now at this point in the process, it's mostly just repetition. So you're gonna keep on moving in a counterclockwise fashion and tying clove hitch knots or adding new working strings in any gaps that you might have. all of your working cords and you're nearing the end of your lead cord it might be time to finish your project so what I usually like to do is take my favorite mug or glass and I just put it on top of the coaster just to make sure that it's large enough this size looks perfect to me so I'm gonna start working on cleaning up my coaster so the first step that I like to do is tuck in the loose end of the lead cord. Because this lead cord kind of goes in a different direction from the other cords, I just like to tuck it into the back. It just gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. But again, you can skip this step if you prefer not to. For this step, you'll need a wide-eyed tapestry needle so what I do is feed the end of the lead cord into the tapestry needle. Then working from the back of the coaster, I try to find a knot that's a few rows in and I will just thread the needle through the back of that knot. Gently pull the needle through, making sure not to pull too hard. And once it's through, you can go ahead and remove the needle and you're just going to trim the remainder of that loose cord. Now you can flip the coaster back over and start trimming all of the loose ends. So I go in and usually cut around the coaster at a about an inch, maybe an inch and a half in length. And this stage of cutting doesn't need to be perfect because we are going to do a final trim after we comb it out. Next, you'll need a comb or a brush, and you're just gonna go around the coaster, combing it out section by section. For this step, make sure not to go too fast. You don't wanna snag any of the knots or anything like that with the comb. And once I've brushed it out from the top, I flip it around to the bottom, and I like to give it another comb through from that side, just to make sure all of the strings are fully combed out. So 
now I'm just touching it up one more time before I go through and do the final trim. Once all of the strings look like they're brushed out evenly, it should be safe to go ahead and trim it. So I'm just gonna take my fabric scissors and go in little sections at a time, just cutting at kind of like a rounded angle and starting off a little bit longer than you might want, just in case you need to go back and even things out. It's always better to cut a little bit longer and then go back and shorten it rather than cutting it too short in the first place. And there you have it, your own handmade macrame coaster.